This is a breakdown of Centrifugal Slap from my new album Alacere, which is available on streaming and on Bandcamp as download and limited edition cassette. In this video, we'll check out distortion and clipping and big bass. So yeah, initially I was actually only going to talk about distortion and clipping in this one, but I had quite a lot of good feedback about Centrifugal Slap as a track itself. So I thought I would kind of dissect it a bit more and uh, kind of, yeah, show off some of the bases, some of the bass patterns in here, because they are quite big. So let's listen to distortion and clipping first, because that is quite a nice technique. Um, I think, yeah, so let's start here and um, take a listen. So this one's just a big bass at the moment. And we kind of have this like clipping effect. Or distortion effect again. And it carries on until this F on the S channel here. Now this is going to be a bit of a discovery for me because I have not reviewed this track since I made it. <laughs> so uh, let's take a listen. So I kind of have a vague idea of what's going on here anyway. So yeah, of course. So you can hear anyway that the pulse width is being modulated. This will hopefully be apparent on the FFT. Or the spectrum, sorry. Um, and then on F, we just lower the volume <laughs> to remove the clipping here. But as I mentioned in Subtle Grays, um, the non loop distorts, well, it sounds like it's kind of distorting at least uh, when the volume is entirely high and the filter on the low pass on the PWM instrument is all the way at the top. And it does kind of affect uh, other instruments, as we kind of heard. So it's having a hard time getting through there, this kind of little arpeggio. And that's the point. <laughs> but as soon as we lower the volume here in pattern F, it shines through. So yeah, that's a really useful technique to have uh, in the bank of techniques for nano loop, just because uh, the sound is quite massive. And with the stereo effect on the uh, S channel as well for the chords here, it just sounds huge. You know, and a bit of a, you know, reverb and a little bit of post processing here and there, and it sounds even bigger. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is fairly raw. Uh, I mentioned in a previous video, the only thing I have on here is uh, a bit of a compressor. It basically sounds like that coming from the Game Boy anyway. So, yeah. Um, and then just the big basses through the, the track. So, um, uh, where's the build up? I have no idea. Uh, let's skip through and check. Okay, so let's just wait for the square. All right, well, this one's a softer bass. We can dissect this one as well. So in Nanoloop 2.8, uh, you have the ability to have pitch slides on the S channel. You can toggle the behavior between uh, the LFO affecting the pitch or the uh, instrument parameters by pressing L. In 2.8.2 at least, in 2.8.6, the control scheme has changed, so please refer to the manual. And this bass is kind of like a 
yeah, high modulation, well, yeah, like high modulation frequency again, but low modulation amount. So we get all these nice tones in here. And I think, yeah, so this is uh, all zero semitones uh, difference as well. So everything here is just the same four notes. And let's listen to six. I think we're just changing the modulation amount. Maybe not. Hmm. Oh yeah, no, we are, just by one step. And then even there, yeah, we're getting kind of like some distortion and clipping on there as well, because our volume is all the way at the top. And what's the next one? It is seven. Oh, that's just a <laughs> clear. And then we've got five again, which is the same. Uh, but yeah. Do -do -do. And then we're on to nine over here. Actually, I guess two comes first. But yeah, we've basically covered this now, I think. So that's pretty much all of the bases, I think, in this. Very, very bass heavy. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I had a really good time writing uh, this track, especially this one for Alisari. Um, I just wanted to push all of the sounds as hard as I could on Nanoloop and produce something that no one's ever had Nanoloop do before. <laughs> I hope I succeeded in that. I had some good feedback saying similar things, so thank you to those people. And uh, yeah, um, it's a real pleasure to have been able to share these techniques with everyone and produce these videos. Uh, I really enjoy using Nanoloop as software. Um, this is the last video in this series. So check out uh, the previous series for Nanoloop Mono where Kenabit and I look at Nanoloop Mono. <laughs> um, I think we missed off quite a lot of stuff in that series. Um, so maybe I'll go back at some point once I've made some Nanoloop Mono tracks proper and do some track breakdowns and some kind of uh, go into the features in depth a little more. I may go back to Flow and do some track breakdowns from Flow. I have the B side of Anachronous still around. The A side got deleted, unfortunately. So I may do some track breakdowns for those, but um, maybe just chemical on flow. I'm not sure. If there's any requests, please put them in the comments. And yeah, I think that's everything. Um, I am hoping to do a Nanolink Classroom series with uh, somebody else. We have not made any plans proper yet, although we have talked about it. So we should hopefully be able to do that sometime this year. If not, bug me about it and it should happen at some point. In that series, it will be more like the Nanoloop Mono Classroom series, where it's two people walking through the interface, going at a reasonable pace, and we're kind of explaining features as we go. Um, I wanted to do that a bit here with the track breakdowns, not only to push Alessaria a bit more, but also to kind of get going on some video production and uh, use my studio, which I've just moved into a little bit and kind of you know get everything set up and make sure it's all going to work for me. So that was the track breakdown series of Nanoloop Classroom for Alessari. Um, I hope to see you soon. Thanks. If you like this episode of Nanoloop Classroom, please consider leaving a like or subscribing.
I don't make money from these videos, so if you feel like supporting me directly, there are links to my music on Bandcamp and streaming platforms in the description, along with links to support me directly monetarily and some affiliate links to the equipment I use creating my music and videos. Thanks for watching.